Antonio Pelledri, thank you so much for your time. Um, so I'm in Bartalia, Stroke Little Italy. Um, I've just interviewed you for the forthcoming book, The Little Big Man, Mickey Duff. Uh, you were quite close with Mickey, didn't you, for quite a while? Yeah, I've got many happy memories with Mickey. Um, as I told you earlier, I worked in Italy quite often doing the translation for many of his boxes, Billy Hardy, uh, Kirtland Lang. Yeah, and we had some great times out there. Yeah, um, he's been gone now just over 10 years and he was actually he was in here all the time, wasn't he? He was in here all the time because he had his office in Mordor Street and him, Denny, uh, Frank Bruno, Terry Lawless, they used to all frequent this place. Yeah, um, quite a character then. Great man. Um, a complete and utter legend in boxing. Yeah. Um, there's nothing he didn't do or see. Um, and he had a very sharp memory, unfortunately. Uh, towards the end, uh, it, it wasn't as sharp. But he still remembered that he got on a, a TWA plane uh, to go over and make a fight with a contract at 11.17. And he had the contract signed by four o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, he told me all these kind of stories. And, you know... Massive, massive uh, man in boxing. Very, very powerful. I mean, we just done an interview there for the book, and you kind of touched on how much of a, what's the word, quite a spectacle if he lost it. Uh, yeah, I saw him lose it. Uh, I was in a rules meeting with Kirtland Lang, and uh, the Italians were trying to rile Mickey, which, which didn't take a lot of doing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they wanted Kirtland Lang to cut off his dreads, and obviously Kirtland was re reluctant to do it, and that's quite right. You know, why why would you insist on that? And uh, during the course of the uh, the rules meeting, Mickey asked me for the Italians to show them the Rai uh, television contract, and uh, they were reluctant to do so. And Mickey lost his temper and you know, immediately erupted. And I was sitting next to him, and he goes, "Tell them I don't want any fucking monkey business." <laughs> I said, "Mickey, I said, look, you know, I said." And you've got to relay that back. Yeah, how do you translate any money monkey business? You know, but uh, yeah, I had some great, uh, great times with him. I had uh, Denny Mancini brought over Willie Pep, and uh, we later with Mickey, Denny, and Willie Pep went up to my grandmother's house. And we all had dinner together in the dining room. It was about 18 of us. And it was a, it was a fabulous evening. And uh, Mickey enjoyed it thoroughly. Also, um, Denny phoned me up one day and said, uh, Billy Schwer's fighting a guy. I've got the video. Will you take Mickey, Mickey up to your flat in Great Portland Street and show, show it to him on the video? And the flat was quite a big flat. It was, uh, it was, quite, it was very big. And Mickey sat there and he goes, Anthony, he said, this is a big flat. He said, have you any, ever run any shows from this flat? And I said, Mickey, no. But he, he was always one. He always had a, he was very quick-witted. I was at the London Next Boxes of the week and I interviewed uh, Stephen Powell. And uh, he said he's regularly spoken of. So obviously you're, you know, kind of everyone knows this place in Soho. Does he ever still get mentioned around in here then? He? Well, I... I never had any run-ins with Mickey. I only had, he had a run-in with me. Yeah. And uh, Baritel is notoriously famous. He's 75 years old, five generations of the same family. And um, Frank Warren got in touch with me and asked me if I would allow him to do the press conference for um, Joe Calzaghi um, for an upcoming fight that he had. Of which I agreed because uh, it was good for the cafe and it was great publicity. Press it, uh, conference went well, all the boxing writers were down, everything went in the papers the next day, which was great. Later that day, I get a phone call. Hello, Anthony. I said, hello, who's that? He said, it's Mickey. He said, Anthony, did you let Frank Warren do a press interview in Bar Italia? I said, yeah, Mickey. I said, I did. He said, well, you're not coming to any of my fucking shows. He said, that's the last time. He said, you're not welcome. He said, don't come in. I said, Mickey. I said, okay, I get that. I said, but Frank Warren wasn't paying me. I said, and I, 
Um, mm. not, not getting paid for it. So I just thought it'd be the right thing to do. And it was. And uh, Mickey, Mickey um, thought better of it. And uh, I carried on working for Mickey as a translator in the Italian boxes. And it was all water under the bridge. He calmed but, down eventually. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he was quick to blow and then quick to calm down. And how should he be remembered? Oh, he's a legend. I mean, you know, I know he's in the, I think he's in the boxing Hall of Fame. Yes, he is. Soto. 99. Uh, yeah, I mean, he is, he's, 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 he is Mr. Boxing. I mean, yeah. you know, he's up there. So he literally came from the East End for nothing and worked his, well, yeah. rose to the top. Yeah, he did. As I know you know his career, his boxing career. And 69 his, professional his management, fights. But he had good people around him, Jarvis Astaire and Mike Barrett. Um, and Terry Lawless, and uh, you know, they were brilliant, but Mickey was the number one. Absolute pleasure, thank you so much, and uh, I look forward to releasing the book next year and giving you a copy of the thank okay, you. Okay, okay, that's great.